I'm going to show you how to replace the front brake pads on the 2006 Audi S4. This is the B6 body style. Um, there's plenty of videos, step-by-step -step videos by pros that are on YouTube, so I'm not really going to go step-by-step. -step. purpose of this video is just to provide you with a couple of little tips and hints that would be helpful for a novice like me. Uh, sometimes those pros skip past steps that have a lot of us stumped, and so I try to address some of those, uh, those issues that, uh, if you've done it before, are no problem. But if you've never done it before, you might be a little confused. The other video is just say remove this clip, but they don't really show how it's done. Um, there is a tab right underneath here, and you're going to need to pry this up to get that tab out of there. And then you can get this back like that. All right, the next thing to consider is when you're taking these bolts out of the back, um, this is an Allen. Uh, an Allen bolt, and it's an 8 millimeter Allen bolt. Um, and you're not going to be able to get it with your typical Allen wrench, the L-shaped thing. You're going to need to get yourself a socket, because there's a lot of, uh, these are on here really, really tight. Um, the other thing is that there's four of these, and the, there's one here, I don't know if you can see there's one here, and then two in the middle, and then one at the bottom. This first one, you're not going to be able to get the sensor is in the way, so you need to take this sensor off to get your wrench on it. And the sensor comes off. There's a locking tab down here at the bottom of the sensor. It's a black tab. You got to get a screwdriver under it. Okay, and once you get that tab off, and you can even break it off because you're going to put new sensor on there anyways, but this turns 90 degrees. It allows you to pull it up and out of the way. All right, another important novice tip, pros don't need to know this, make sure you got your wrench going the right way. Because um, it's back here, so you're, you're kind of reverse. And it's, it's sort of easy if you're not, if you don't do this all the time, to do it the wrong way. And especially when there's so much torque on this, you wouldn't, you don't know if you're going the right way or if you're tightening it. So just double check, make sure you got your wrench going the right way. Now getting these bolts off again, it's just, they're really hard. This side's a little easier than the other side because you can push up on it. So you can get your leg under and use your foot to give you some leverage. Make sure you have this thing seated really well so you don't strip out that, strip out that nut that bolt. <clears throat> like I said, you're really under here. If this thing were to fall off, you'd just be dead. Um, this one I got off easier. Like that. Let's try this one down here. All right, again, novices, you can understand. You know, it's one thing if you've got the car up on a lift and you got every assortment of tools and pneumatics at your disposal. Another thing if you just got what you got. So this one I couldn't get up. So with by hand, so I'm going to try it with a jack. There, moved enough. Should be able to get it by hand now. Yeah. Okay. This will just come off. And your pad is stuck in here with a little springy clip. You can just use a screwdriver to pry that out. And that just comes out like that. And then this part 
also it's on two pins. Uh, let me see if I can show you the pins. Well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you that. Let's see. So it rides on these two pins. There's one here and one there. Now hang this sucker up so it doesn't wreck the brake line. Okay, this step in the pro videos is simply unplug the connectors. For us amateurs, sometimes it's a little more difficult than that. I really struggled getting this one apart. There's a little tab. If you look, the curved part is here. And on the top of it is a tab which is, is under here. So you have to kind of, you have to pry the female part up in order to get this male part, which is attached to the brake pad, apart. And believe me, it <laughs> sounds a whole lot easier than it is, but see if you can slide a screwdriver under here and then pry this back. So I'm going to see if it goes better on this one than it did the last one. There. And that, that did in fact go way better than the first time, but I, I wasn't sure what I was doing. And then, Okay, now this is just me as a novice and probably the most controversial thing I'm going to do here. And I get that, but you know, if you look at this lip, I don't even think it's a millimeter difference between where the pads are touching and where they weren't touching. So if, you know, you assume that is the same on the back, you've got maybe a millimeter or a millimeter and a half less thickness of this entire disc after 55,000 miles, I can't imagine that is going to make any difference. Um, what does make sense to me is that the people that sell disc rotors and the people that install disc rotors are always going to tell you you need to replace these because what, you know, they make money on it. I'm going to leave it in place. We'll see how it goes. Um, the um, directions on my brake pad say to sand off the residue with 130 grit sandpaper, which I'm going to do. And um, my guess is it's going to work just fine. If it doesn't work just fine, it really isn't that big of a deal to you just take off this carrier. There's, two, there's bolts in the back. Undo this screw right here. Hit it with a hammer. This will come out. You can put the new disc on. I'm not going to do that this time. All right, if you're going to be doing this job, um, it's really a good idea to get a real live compressing tool. They come, they're universal compressors. It's about 25 bucks, and it'll let you um, compress the uh, piston back in just about any car. I mean, every car that I've ever tried, it's worked. All right, so you're going to find the disc that's this size, and then this tool will go here. Now, the thing that's different on this, and it is on my other cars, is that usually the brake caliper is all one piece. Um, what you need to do with this one is take your half right here. You're going to feed your brake tool through this hole and then you're going to need to bolt this back together again. Incidentally I've seen other others that just loosen the, the brake bleeder screw and let the uh, fluid out. I, my fluid, first of all, has been changed relatively recently because of the age of my car. So I'm not worried about the fact that it's super old. Um, but, uh, you know, if you do that, if you open it, you're going to have to bleed it. And again, that's, uh, that's the wrong bolt. So it's one thing if you're in a shop and you've got a bleeding tool and you've got other people to help you. It's another thing if you're trying to figure it out by yourself. So I just assume not open the system. Um, if you leave the system closed, of course, as you squish this caliper or this piston back into the caliper, it's going to make the level of your brake fluid go up in your reservoir. So you're going to have to just do a little turn here and there, and then you're going to have to. I got a turkey baster, and I'm just sucking the uh, I'm just sucking the brake fluid out of there as it as it goes up so I'll show you that in a second so I'm going to get this 
relatively tight. We're not putting, there really isn't a lot of force. It's just, it doesn't take a lot of force to push this back in. So, let's see. You can see how I've got this tool now is is in here. And it's and now as I turn this here, it'll slowly push this piston back in. But now I gotta go check my reservoir. Yeah, and it's still good. I had sucked it out, so come back here. Turn it a few times. There. So it's stopped now. Now I can dial this out. I'm going to take the caliper apart to, um, to get my tool out. And I'm going to put the pads in. I am found a recommendation in uh, people online. I'm going with these Hawk Performance HPS ferrocarbon disc brake pads. And let's see if I can get you the, the number for this car. It is HB538F.760. These were quite a bit more expensive than a lot of the other ones you could buy. They were like 110 bucks, but since I'm doing it myself, I'm saving all that money. I didn't want to cheap out on brake pads. So um, it does come with the grease pack, which goes on the back of the pads. Also goes on these pins that support the, the back caliper. When you put these brake pads in, um, put it into the carrier first, and then put the, you have to slide this on these pins on this caliper, and then squish it so it snaps into that hole. On the front side, you're going you're gonna to want to clip this into the carrier first, which is different than the back. Don't get grease on the top or on the disc. And then this, you should be able to just slide in like that. Now we're gonna put our bolts back in. Of course, I got my sensor hooked up. And now that I think of it, I needed to tighten this up before I put the sensor on. So I'm still learning, um, but you don't have to make that mistake. So I'm going to have to take that sensor back off again in order to get my wrench on there. The last thing to do, of course, put the spring back on. Again, you've got this clip here. So there isn't any real trick to it. Just kind of muscle it in there with your screwdriver. It's not that tough. Make sure it drops in that hole though. There. That's pretty much all there is to it. <laughs>